Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Victoria and today we are going to be talking about romances that I just can't stop thinking about. They're ones that I read. All of them are ones that I read this year. They're all ones that just have completely stuck in my mind that I can't stop thinking about. They're ones that I will probably go back and reread at some point if I have not already. Um, I very much enjoyed all of these uh, books and they're just stuck in my head. So we're gonna get right into it. They're all very different also, and that's really something. They're all different uh, types of stories. They all have like different tropes in them and everything, so it's very interesting. Okay, let's see what we have. So I have actual physical copies of a couple of these. So the first one is one that is absolutely going to end up on my favorite books of the year list, and that is Juniper Hill by Devney Perry. This is book two in the Eden series, um, and you could read it on its own, but I, you should read the whole Eden series. It's great. Um, but this is my favorite in the series. It is Knox and Memphis's story. Memphis has literally just given birth. Her baby is like brand spanking new when she has to flee from her family in New York City who are toxic and she decides to come to Montana um, and uh, be a housekeeper at the Eloise Inn um, in Quincy, Montana. And she grew up incredibly wealthy um, and she uh, had to leave her very toxic past lifestyle and uh, family behind and flee um, with her newborn baby boy and she ends up uh, staying at a staying at Knox's house. Knox um, is Eloise who runs the Eloise Inn's brother um, and he has a house above his, like a studio apartment above his garage and his sister wrangled him into letting uh, Memphis stay in the apartment above his garage. He's not super happy about it because he likes his space. But once she gets there and he meets her, uh, they have a very strong connection. Memphis is going through the hardest time of her life um, and Knox is really there to help her. Um, he really sees how much Memphis is trying and how much everything is so hard for her because she literally has never done anything like this before in her life. Um, and it's amazing. It's amazing. Knox has such a grumpy personality and is so softened by not just Memphis but by her baby boy and it's so cute. Um, my favorite scenes in this book are uh, Memphis's son screams like crazy at night uh, and Knox can hear it from his house and uh, he ends up having to stomp across his driveway to the house and he just is like give me the baby um, after he can't take it anymore and he like holds the baby and talks to him and just rocks him and just allows Memphis a moment of peace, of clarity, of sleep, of, of reprieve from being a single mother who is struggling beyond belief and it was just absolutely beautiful story. I loved their romance. I loved, I love the family, uh, the Edens family. Um, I just think that it was so so good and I love it so much. The next one that I have is The Words by a Jade or Ashley Jade. This book is completely different from that. This is a rock star romance that is sort of second chance vibes. The heroine Lennon, um, when she was in high school with the hero Phoenix, was his tutor. Lennon was kind of a loser and Phoenix was a popular bad boy type and Lennon ends up tutoring Phoenix and helping him uh, pass their like English final so that he can graduate and uh, they end up becoming close. Um, they sort of start a relationship and then Phoenix does something that is incredibly uh, not nice and breaks 
uh, Lennon's trust completely, breaks her heart, and uh, then Phoenix goes off and becomes a famous rock star and Lennon's life goes in a very different direction than she thought it was going to be. And now it's like five years later and uh, Phoenix's manager seeks out Lennon and hires her to be Phoenix's sober companion or like to keep him out of the... Uh, he's been getting a lot of bad press and so um, his manager needs her to keep him from being in the press um, and Lennon is like absolutely not but the manager gives her lots of money and so Lennon uh, and Lennon is very much desperate for money and so she accepts and she decides that this will be a great time for me to break Phoenix down the way that he broke me down um, and so she wants to destroy Phoenix and it's very good. It's really long, but it's so worth it. I read it in, I think, one sitting, actually, and I want to reread it already so much, and it's so, so good. I loved it so much. Absolute five-star read, um, and it's just so, it's gritty and, and, and intense and romantic at times and just so interesting and it's really really good trigger warning for drug use excessive drug use by the way um because there are some difficult scenes um and also for uh illnesses like dementia so it's really really good i would highly recommend it it's very good. Uh, the next one that I have is one that I read really recently. I think actually in September I read it, and that is Bittersweet Heart by Helena Hunting. It just came out in September, I believe. And this one is about Maverick. Um, his father is Alex Waters from Pucked, and Alex Waters is a NHL legend. And Maverick has always played hockey. He has always been told, oh, you're going to follow in your father's footsteps. You, he, He's always been compared. His hockey career has always been compared to his father's. And uh, Maverick is in his senior year of college, winter break before the, his last semester of college. He meets this woman and he ends up having a one night stand with her and having like amazing, like best sex of his life, really connected to her and everything, but he has to leave the next morning very early. He has hockey practice. Um, and so he leaves and he doesn't think he's ever gonna see her again until he walks into his new class um, in his last semester of college and that woman is his professor. Um, and it is very jarring for him he, uh, because he very much has coasted by on his I'm a hockey player and I have a rich dad kind of vibe through college and the heroine, his professor, whose name is Clover actually, she does not accept this and she very much makes him work hard and uh, they get off sort of on the wrong foot as professor student it is awkward for both of them and uh, Clover has recently uh, gotten out of a very toxic relationship she is separated from her husband um, and trying to get him to sign divorce papers he was a uh, very controlling husband uh, sort of emotionally abusive and Clover and Maverick end up trying really hard to like stay away from each other but they can't really because they work they're in class together and Maverick just has such difficulty staying away from Clover and so they end up growing their relationship even more and um it is very taboo because they're not allowed because it's professor student and they're not allowed um, but it was the kind of age gap professor student that was so interesting because when his parents found out, his mom went full like mama bear on Clover and like went after her for like having an inappropriate relationship with her younger son. And I thought it was so interesting and I was like trying to think in all of the age gap relationships that I've read, I have never come across one where one of the parents gets like 
really like upset about the fact that their their like child could be being like taken advantage of like there I, I'm like trying to think of any like age gap books that I've read where I've done where that has happened and it was so startling to me when I was reading it and being like why isn't this more in more <laughs> in more books like I've read so many age gap books and none of their parents seem concerned by the fact that they're in these large age gap relationships that they're in per that their partner it that the uh their child's partner is in a position of power over them, like anything like that. Um, and it was also interesting in a like um, gender dynamic because while um, Clover is in a position of power over Maverick as his professor, he is a man um, and uh, he is a lot bigger than her. And so even though he's younger than her, he is bigger and stronger than her. And so it gets to this point where it's like, um, where they even discuss like what Maverick can do in certain situations to before their relationship starts what Maverick can do to like not be considered like scary or creepy um, and Maverick is very very aware of those kind of things because his sister was kidnapped as a child and traumatized by the man who took her and so Maverick has seen firsthand what it's like when a man hurts a woman um or a man takes advantage of a woman that's smaller than them and so if you've read um Catherine Cowell's Tattered and Torn series it reminded me of uh the third or second the second book in that series the sisters book where she deals with the repercussions of her sister getting kidnapped when the sibling gets kidnapped it impacts the entire family and it impacts all of the siblings that are in the family and so maverick they've spent so much time focusing on violet his sister that had gotten kidnapped as a child she has anxiety she has ptsd about it she has so much uh trauma around it and Maverick has the same type of like traumas, not to her extent, obviously, but they never focus, but the family never like dealt with what happened with the other, ch to the other children and how it impacted the other children and how it impacted the parents and everything. Their entire family dynamic shifts and it was really interesting to see after reading Lavender's book and, and seeing how she, the child who was kidnapped, dealt with that trauma. It was really interesting to then read Mavericks and how Lavender's trauma impacted him and one of the things that made him that impacted him a lot is him being very aware of the fact that he is a man, he is larger, he could take advantage. Um, and so he changed his life to focus on this. He teaches a self-defense class to women. He does all of this stuff to make sure that he is not seen as threatening um, when in a situation with, an, with a woman. And I thought it was so interesting to see how that trauma of his family has impacted him and I just thought it was so interesting and I thought that it was it it showed how mature Maverick was and it made the age gap seem so much less like it was not an issue when Maverick's mom came and was talking to Clover and being like how dare you be like so much older than my son I was like oh yeah they are he is a lot younger than her like he doesn't seem it because he it seems so mature because of everything that he's dealt with in his life um and so i think that when maverick's parents end up get when maverick ends up talking to his parents about it and being like this is the situation this is how i have felt my entire life his parents have their like full eyes opened and been like oh my god we didn't even realize um, because they spent so much time focusing on Lavender and it was just very interesting um, and I have so many thoughts about it. I think that it was done really really well and it was very good and I have been thinking about it a lot so obviously it, it is one that's that's fully on my mind. Another one that I can't stop thinking about um, that is a lot more that is also like 
emotional is uh, Ever After Always by Chloe Lise. This one is, uh, I actually think it's book three in the uh, Bergman sibling series, but I read all of them out of order. And so it is one that I was putting off for a very long time because it is a marriage in trouble romance. But when I decided to read it, I finally decided to read it, I was like really, really emotional and like in my feels one day and was like, this is the perfect time to read a really emotional romance and this is the one that I ended up picking. And it was so incredibly good, so well done. And it really is incredibly emotional. Um, Freya and her husband, whose name I can't remember, Aiden, Freya and Aiden have been married for like a long time, like 10 years or something like that. And they are going through a very difficult time. Um, they, uh, Aiden has a lot of um, trauma from the fact that he was incredibly poor. Um, he dealt with extreme poverty as a child. And he is very conscious about money, very nervous about money, always constantly thinking about money. And Freya did not grow up poor and she does not really understand what it would, what it's like for Aiden. And so when Freya and Aiden start trying to have a child, Aiden starts thinking about how expensive children are and he starts thinking about all of this stuff that could go wrong and how much it's going to like and it starts triggering him and he Aiden has a lot of anxiety um already um he has anxiety uh disorder and so he gets very triggered um, and Freya, he starts, uh, and he starts spending a lot of time, extra time at work, and he starts being very, like, working on this really secret project and everything, and Freya is like, what are you doing? Like, why won't you talk to me? What's going on? And she's kind of, like, at her wit's end. She very much is, she's confused. She doesn't know what's going on. She just very much is, feels the separation between the two of them that was, like, never there before. And uh, they go to therapy, they end up having to really work through and discuss and everything between the two of them and having stronger communication um, between the two of them to work through their issues as a married couple. Freya has this ideal of what she believes that marriage should be or is like and it's very fairy tale. Um, and she has seen her parents um, be so happy and have six or seven kids or however many they have and just be happy. And she never sees any of the hard parts of her parents' marriage. And so she very much is like, oh, when you get married, you're happy. You work, you talk to your partner, you're happy, everything's fine. You work through it together. And so she very much gets that fairy tale shattered when she realizes that marriage is hard and that working there will be ups and there will be downs and there it is hard and it is not you put in equal effort it's sometimes your partner is really at a low and you have to put in more to help lift them up kind of thing and and it was very very emotional and I very much enjoyed it um and it really it really makes you think about marriage and I am not somebody who has a fairy tale view of marriage I don't know if I ever want to get married um and so it was very interesting I had a lot of thoughts about it um and um as somebody who has anxiety and other chronic conditions that aren't going away it made me really think of like if I was to get married what would my partner need what my partner would need to deal with as a partner to me so it was interesting and obviously I have a lot of thoughts <laughs> um but I very much enjoyed it um and would recommend the book on a much lighter or different note another book that I can't stop thinking about which is incredibly different genre like vibe 
Bonds That Tie series by Jay Bray. This is a paranormal reverse harem series that starts as a bully romance. Um, the heroine's name is Ollie or Oliander, and in this world, there is these things called bonded. They're sort of like faded mates. Um, and you can tell who they are with a blood test. Um, and so Ollie uh, found out quite young after her parents died. Um, she found out quite young who her bonded were. She has, I believe, five of them and some of them are quite a lot older than her. And she um, has a uh, she ends up running away and her bonded have no idea her bonds have no idea why she ran away they just think oh you didn't want to be bonded to us um, and so she uh, ran away and she stayed on the run for a really long time actually for a couple of years until finally one of her bonds captures her and that is uh, and brings her to Draven Academy and one of her bonds is North Draven. He is a councilman. He is very very rich from a very rich family. His brother Knox is also one of her bonds and uh, it's very interesting and they, all five of her bonds, have very different views and opinions and thoughts on her, how her running away affected them. And so they're not very nice to her at first um, and she, uh, they think that she has no power and she is hiding the fact that she, she is, does actually have a power because, um, in this world a lot of the people are gifted and so she is pretending that she's non-gifted. Um, and, uh, it is... <laughs> so interesting. It is twists, it is turns, it is drama, it is intrigue, it is romance, it is just oh my god there is so much going on in this series. Um, this first book the writing is not amazing but I still flew through it and because the book is so freaking addicting when I decided to read this book I accidentally read book two and three right freaking after it and I've recently read book four and I'm currently reading book five so it is a really great series I absolutely love it um there is all the, book, the books do end on cliffhangers. There will be a final uh, like HEA in book six, um, which has not come out yet. It comes out at the end of October, but oh my jeez. Uh, it's so freaking addicting. It's so drama-filled and interesting, and the world is, is interesting and f like intricate and yet easy to understand. Like you don't there's also wars going on. There's the resistance that they're um, they're fighting the resistance, um, and there are these bad guys who are trying to capture Ollie. And oh my god, it's so there's so much going on. It's so interesting, and at the same time, she's trying to deal with the fact that these five men are supposed to be her fated, basically fated bonds for her entire life, and they currently hate her. So it's. Oh good, it's so interesting. I love it. I can't wait to read book five and to also read book six and see how it ends. Um, I would very much recommend the audiobooks. There are only audiobooks out for the first four. Uh, the fourth audiobook just came out and uh, I would very much recommend the audiobooks. I think that it is like a game changer for the series. Like I think that they do um, listen better um, and it's would very much recommend it um but be warned that you will probably be sucked in and uh your reading plans will get thrown out the window <laughs> i think that's good we're gonna end here because i did talk a lot more about some of the books than i thought i was going to so i did have a couple of others but i think that we're gonna cap it here um and so that is gonna be the end of the video uh, please let me know down in the comments below if you read any of these books what your thoughts on them are I would love to hear about it but that is going to be it for this video please like it if you liked it subscribe and stick around so you can see more content from me and I hope you have a wonderful day bye